vibe in this in this movie, eh? No, definitely not. <laughs> hey, you talk. Wait, wait, wait. What's a good cry? Like, I'll stab you in the eye with a soldering iron. Like she's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely not that. I. Jake, are you going to tap out? <laughs> I, think... I like these sweaty gloves, Jake. Uh, I mean, the movie is very. Oh yeah, that was that was it. that line had some character to it though. That was I kind of heard her say that. I'm like, oh, that's, that's an interesting thing to say. But I think Amber Heard did the best she could with this. I mean, some of it's very definitely filmed from the the male gaze in this right. role, but there's still enough to her in this to make her more than the stock girl. I think. Yeah. yeah. At one point. Uh, Sean Ferris says to her, you know, you better be careful. You're starting to sound pretty smart. And so, like, <laughs> they did try, you know, they did try. They tried to, you know, maybe maybe give her uh, something to do with this. I agree. It's 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 not a great – there's not a lot here to work with. But mm -hmm. uh, I think she did her best. And, yeah, she, she, she did well with it overall. It was interesting, though, at the end when Tyler and McCarthy were fighting and Baja was just crying and just yelling for Ryan to stop. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it wasn't that bad of a beatdown yet. So I guess, you know, the, the direction Wadlow gave her probably wasn't the best. But other than that, I mean, I, was, it's, I thought she was cool in it. I don't know. I like her role. I think yeah, she's a, a, a good movie girlfriend, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. I feel like yeah. every 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 high school fight that, that I ever saw, that both guys would be fighting and their girlfriends would be off to the side crying. So, oh, you know. Oh, okay. Like... That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> These like these guys are idiots, right? Watching these two. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what? You make a great point. You're right. She doesn't want to see this guy who has a bad arm getting beat up by an absolute jerk. Yeah. 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 No, that's fair. You know what's funny that you say that? Like in high school, you think you look awesome when you're fighting, but if you watch the playback of it, you're like, I am so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's it's that that happens in high school too. But it's like now when I go and I play. Uh, you know, I go play men's pickup basketball or something like that, and and for whatever reason, someone will be like, let's let's film ourselves playing so that we can you know see and I don't know improve somehow. And it feels like you are going extremely fast when you're out there, and it looks like you are watching it on half speed when you watch it back. How you think you look, and how you actually look. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. All right, cool. Hey, so how about this? Let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we will talk more and never back down. We will be right back. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. And we were talking during the break, and it, it, it's just so funny that you brought that up about, you know, like, the girlfriends are just watching their boyfriends fight because the boyfriends just look like complete idiots out there. And they, they in their heads, they probably think they look awesome, but if they watch a the videotape, they'd just be windmilling and uh, looking incredibly silly and overly angry, and they would just be and, wildly and, and embarrassed. Not, well, and not proving anything. <laughs> like, the winner's like, cool, you know, I, I, I won. There's no judges. There's no belt. Like, <laughs> You push you me, know, you know, I, you push me. Yeah, yeah. It would look like those fights on the beach in this movie. So you kind of have the B-League of fights that are, well, I mean, those are pretty, still pretty good. Oh, I loved I loved the the B League fight montage. This yeah. this movie had some great montages oh, yeah. all around. The like they had Rise Against montage. They had Red Jumpsuit Apparatus montage. Yeah. Oh, and then that was Teenager Scare, and that's a perfect song because these idiots are just fighting on the beach, and they had the CGI gloves on a couple of them, which I think is hilarious. Okay. I don't oh, know if you noticed that, but when you watch it now, the second unit was filming some fights, and the director came down. He's like, "You don't have gloves." So if you watch some of the fights, the gloves look very not believable. <laughs> Just to give I didn't you a heads notice up. that. That's amazing. But it, it, and, and most of those fighters are like the producer's son, by the way, which is kind of interesting. But they uh, – yeah, those are the wild ones. Those are the high school fights right there. But they were still – the one unbelievable thing about this movie is these were quite organized. And they seemed to have a system to them. It was more of like a fight club than a high school mm -hmm. fight. And whoever would allow the boyfriend and girlfriend to fight, even though the girlfriend won, mm -hmm. that's a pretty interesting decision. But I do like that teenager scare the living uh, crap out of me playing by My Chemical Romance while these, yeah. these kids are fighting. I mean, that's a cheeky song to pick. Yeah, no, I I, I, I loved it. I, I'm with you. The intergender intergender uh, fight probably wouldn't fly, 
fly, but mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, so that that's maybe a little bit unrealistic. But yeah, I, I honestly, again, the, the music choices throughout this whole thing, I think were just just spot on throughout. And uh, and and yeah, the the training montages. Um, I mean, that's maybe one thing that we haven't specifically talked about. You know, in terms of like zero to Rocky Four, how did you feel about the the training montages uh, in oh. this movie? I mean, I like that they had a Rocky Three reference. Yeah, the run at the race. Yeah. I, I love that. That made me very happy that they had that. But I, I think, okay, so Jake Tyler was an athlete. He was a college, a high school football player. He seemed to know boxing with his right that he had. So maybe he had trained boxing. Mm-hmm. So he's an athletic high schooler kid. If you get with like a Roka and he, I mean, I don't know how long this movie takes place over months. Yeah, I think it's probably. a few months. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you go there every day and you're an athletic high schooler, you're going to pick up st- – and you can rebound from injuries a lot quicker than you and I could. So, yep. I mean, I, I like the fact that when he – so they were joking around about how this movie felt like it was just a movie filming a bag because they had that really big heavy bag sequence where Roka teaches him how to throw the combo and move the bag. Right. I, I like that he couldn't move the bag in the beginning. I like that it hurt his hands, that he didn't quite know how to punch it. I, I mean, it, the the you know what? the, the And you know what's interesting too? So he gets all these montages, and then he can he can beat up some college kids on the side of the road in Florida. But then he goes up against McCarthy again and loses. So I think this movie does a smart job of the incremental montages. Yeah. It's not just like I I learned a montage now I can destroy people. It, it, did right. you get that vibe? Yeah, totally. It's not all of a sudden I know kung fu and 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 now I I'm just going to destroy everybody. I, I, again, I really resonated with that. I can remember the first time ever kicking. We had heavy bags like that at the gym that I trained at. And it, you actually, over time, kicking a bag like that, your shins like become conditioned. You know, you microfracture the bones in your shin and then they heal and they, they harden. And that happens with your knuckles as well when you're, when you're hitting a bag uh, consistently. And so if you just step up for the first time, you know, never having really trained before and slam your shin into a bag like that, it absolutely kills like i think the first time i ever did it i i hit the floor afterwards so yeah i i i thought that they captured that perfectly you know the learning how to breathe and stay yeah. calm while you're training is a huge thing in in mma and the, the idea like the the reason that a lot of people you know you see this in professional mma still the reason that a lot of people lose fights is because they get gassed and they they can't stay calm they have that adrenaline dump mm-hmm. um so yeah I, again i i think that it hit on so many things Things that for all that, you know, you, you maybe say the movie's unrealistic. I think that there was a lot of realism in here that they really nailed. Yeah, the training. Absolutely. I mean, just yeah. watching. I, I guess when I say the un, like not realistic stuff, I mean, this the Superman punches, which do happen a lot. But sure. Yeah, I mean, like some of the submissions, whatever. But yeah, like when they're throwing the concrete blocks, when they're flipping the tires, when they're just running in hot Florida sun, climbing ropes, like, breathing. I mean, that's so important because you don't think about breathing. That's one thing you don't think about if you're not trained. So yeah, I, I love. I, I think this this movie is, does a really good job of of building the, the the montages, and you nailed it too with the breathing, feeling the pain after kicking a heavy bag. Woof. Uh, oh, I remember brutal. Do you remember sparring and you're getting hit thirty percent? You're like, this hurts. What's the other seventy percent gonna feel like? So it, yes. Yeah. Sparring for the first time ever is an experience like no other. And and what I found again, so I'm training with a bunch of, you know, other newbies as well. None of us have any real experience. None of us really know how to fight. And what would happen in sparring is you'd say, okay, guys, we're going to go 30%. And, and so what happens though, is somebody lands a clean shot and the recipient of that shot goes, that didn't feel like 30%. And so then they up to 50%. Yep. And then when that guy gets, and then, so it just escalates quickly into a full out fight. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, that was the majority of my experiences with, uh, with sparring. And is also why, you know, you, you said your career earlier, I'm going to say my MMA career didn't last as, as long <laughs> as I might've thought. Oh, concussions are horrible, man. I had one. I'm like, is this worth it anymore? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just retired. <laughs> I was so like, for yeah. me, 
I, can't I, do I got this. lucky. I never, I never got concussed, but I, I, I did end up like I, I stopped training MMA in and around the time that I sort of like landed like my first like kind of corporate career job. I, prior to that, I'd been like you know going around with like bruises on my face and black eyes, and I, I didn't want to look like Edward Norton in Fight Club, like where he's like at the office like bleeding all over his desk. I figured that probably wasn't a good look if I wanted any type of career advancement. No, you're right. And just, yeah, coming to work with a black eye. Like, even it's probably if, a good call, right? Yeah, no, that was smart. And uh, This is really <laughs> random. I know we're jumping to something else, but what I like, too, about this movie is, so at the end of the beatdown, a 32-fighter tournament, man. Yeah. And wolf. I mean, that's... In one night. Yeah. One night. You're going to be... Uh, there's just going to be two people laying on each other during this yeah, final yeah, fight. Yeah. Uh, I, but I got to say, I, I like that Jake wins by leg lock, arm bar, triangle, then a head kick KO. But yep. I also dig that what they did was they didn't want to get a bunch of, of just stuntmen to do the stunts to be too polished. What they got MMA fighters around the area from local gyms oh, to be cool. the guys in the tournament. So what's really cool, one of my favorite stories from the commentary, remember when he fights Dak Ho? Uh, yep. Well, that guy, he helped do casting for the film. He helped, helped cast MMA fighters around the area. And so one day he goes up to Jeff Waldo, the director. He's like, hey, man, let me be in this movie. Like, I'm an MMA fighter. I can do it. And Jeff is like, no, you're too nice. You don't look that strong. Like, you're not, not strong. You don't look mean enough. The next day, Jeff got handed a black and white photo of this mean-looking dude who was all shredded and just like, get me this guy. And the, 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 the actor, he just goes, that's me. Like, that's me. Like, <laughs> cast me. So they got that fighter to be – he ended up getting himself cast by showing those photos. And his name is uh, Jonathan Asubio. Actually, he is one of the um, stunt coordinators on this movie, which is pretty okay. cool. But they, I, I don't know, I, I like, they brought an authenticity to it. Because the kids that you're seeing in this final matchup, they don't look too shredded. They actually look like kids that have seen a couple punches. Or they do look like MMA-conditioned people. Because you can notice, you can notice the MMA-conditioned person when you walk by them. But yeah, I thought it added a lot to the believability of them as well. Yeah. Just, the, just the way they move. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. there's that real distinct, like that when, when someone knows how to fight, knows how to handle themselves, you see it. And it's again, one of the things that, um, uh, Ryan McCarthy, Cam, Cam Gigande, I think really, uh, nailed. I think I read somewhere that like, he's got a pretty extensive martial arts background mm -hmm. and it shows, I mean, just the way that he, the way that he moves, the way that he sort of stalks, uh, Sean Ferris, you know, y you can see that he's got that martial arts background. And I think Jaiman as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, had, had some type of martial arts background. So, yeah, I mean, they did a great job casting, uh, you know, some of the extras and the fill-ins with MMA fighters. That's a super cool idea. Um, but I think even the main actors as well, that they, that they you know, got people with martial arts backgrounds of some kind was, was definitely a smart move, which kind of actually leads me to something that I wanted to ask you. So this is a little bit of a, as I was watching this and thinking about it, something that I wanted to ask you a little bit of a thought exercise was if we were to take real MMA fighters, like let's say well-known UFC fighters, we were to take two fighters and we were to cast them into the role of uh, Sean Ferris's character, Jake, and we were to cast a villain to play Cam Gigande's character, Ryan McCarthy, with real MMA fighters, who do you think you would pick for that? Okay. I had a lot of fun with this one, and I think I have perfect answers. But uh, before I, I just want to, one minute, uh, I just want to get something out. Like Cam Gigande, I really... Like, I remember watching Gladiator for the first time, and I just thought, okay, yeah, Russell Crowe could do – I believed in Russell Crowe in that movie, yep. Maximus. Like, Absolutely. I, every time he won a fight, I believed it. But I'm telling you, man, McCarthy, I believed him in this movie. And that's that doesn't happen much to me. So I just want to get that out there before I forget. But I got two really good ones for you. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. So I'm going to start with uh, my hero first. I, I like this one a lot, but I love my villain more. But I think a good hero – would be Dustin Diamond Poirier. Okay, good pick, yeah. A clean-cut kid. Uh, you could put this movie in Louisiana easily. Yep. Uh, Louisiana boy, get Daniel Cormier as the coach. Whoa. Yeah, uh, kind of soft-spoken, uh, underdog qualities. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great call. Yeah, he could look pissed, but get you're going to love this. This is old school. He fought in the UFC, but he's more known for his fights in Japan. But I'm going to say uh, Yoshihiro Akiyama, a.k.a. Oh. Sexyama. Sexy Yama. <laughs> for Ryan McCarthy. That is an incredible pick. That right? is an absolutely incredible pick. I was so happy 
about that. I know he didn't have the best UFC career. He had some good fights. And yep. he had a great fight with at UFC 100 against the guy with the horrible Johnny Cash tattoo. That was oh, quite a Al- good fighter. Alan Belcher. Yeah, Alan, Alan Belcher. Belcher. Yeah. That guy had some talent, but I love their fight. So, but I, I think, man, imagine Akiyama just, you know, he looks like a He'd senator's son. Like just having that attitude and then the fight. And when he, he, I know he got up to about 170, 185. But he would he could cut down. He was a lot lighter in his earlier days. Get him down to 170. I know Poirier fights at 55, right? So he probably walks yeah. around it. Get him up to 60. Get Akiyama to 70. Have them square Perfect. off. I could see that. That's a movie. 